all right folks what is going on this is episode 305 of the first and frame rate show i am the baller and uh over here we talk about georgia southern and atlanta falcons football it's been a pretty good weekend got to go out of town went to go see some family members i got to go see some friends and uh everything is uh was was pretty pretty cool cannot cannot complain at all um didn't do everything i wanted to do um, we, we usually do that when we go out of town. There's so much that we want to do is some things that we're not able to uh, do or accomplish, but it's all good. We we went out, had fun, despite, the you know, all the gas prices and stuff. Uh, made it back in one piece. And for the most part, that's all you can ask for. So that that's pretty cool. So um, today we're going to talk about some strength and conditioning because uh, I've gotten some information and um most of the information is readily available if you've really been following George Southern. That look, these guys, these guys are transforming over there. These football players are doing a uh, 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 transforming into something that they were, uh, you know, they weren't bad looking, but the way they look now, man, look, these kids are beefing up, and I got some pictures I want to show you guys. And uh, also, it's all thanks to the head strength and conditioning coach, Robert Steiner. Haven't talked about him much, but uh, I really want to. Uh, we're going to talk about him uh, very shortly. But first, we all know uh, throughout the weekend, something else happened for the Atlanta, under the Atlanta Falcons. Matt Ryan uh, contract has been restructured. We're going to talk about that very briefly as uh, uh, as well. So if this is your first time here, welcome over here. This is the first and frame rate show. Uh, we talk about Georgia Southern and Atlanta Fox football and uh, everything under the umbrella. And uh, uh, if you're watching on YouTube or Rumble, you know, you can listen uh, on the audio streaming platform of your choice. Um, going all the way from Apple to Stitcher and Anchor and Spotify, Google, everything under the umbrella, you can find me there. Also, if you want to support the show, um, all the links are in the description where you can donate. So uh, if, if you find it in your heart to do so, there it is right there. But the fact that you're just listening, it's all good either way. Uh, so I really appreciate all the support. Um, let's go ahead and get into this. First and foremost, Matt Ryan's uh, contract has been restructured. That gives the Atlanta Falcons what twelve million more dollars in in uh, cap money, and uh, so right now Terry Fontenot and them are basically doing what uh, what the Saints have done. And you know Terry Fontenot was the assistant general manager uh, in New Orleans. So uh, if you know anything about what the Falcons have, I mean the the Saints have been doing for the past, let's say eight nine years. Uh, if you know anything about that, this is basically the route that that we are going in Atlanta. Is this a bad thing? Uh, I will say this: the Saints have been uh incredibly competitive throughout this entire time. Um, since Drew Brees, uh, you know, came in came to New Orleans. I mean, they had a few seven and nine seasons, but for the most part, they've been pretty competitive. So, with that being said, it does not um. It does not. It, it, it's, it doesn't bother me too much. I am not a fan of restructuring because I know kicking the can down the road uh, does um does not bode well in the long run. But hey, I am not the guy that's in front office, so um, I'm going to roll with it. I think it's going to be okay at the end of the day because, uh, like I said, Terry Fontenot it has extremely uh yeah uh, he, he has extreme uh information and extreme uh. Uh, what's the uh, I want to say experience? That's what I'm looking for. He has a lot of experience, um, as far as you know, doing this. So I, I'm not saying that he doesn't know what he's doing. I mean, uh, apparently, they know what's going on. So the salary cap here is is lower because of Matt Ryan's restructure. I think it went down from uh 48. I think it went down to. Two. Uh, let me think. Down to 36. His new base salary is 8.75. And uh, for the most part, um, like I said, the, they get a new uh, cap um, line, which is uh, I think it's, uh, now is at sixteen million. So they're gonna be able to get some people to uh, you know, to come to the to the to the uh, Falcons now. Uh, you're gonna have some other people that's gonna probably end up getting cut. So I, I expect, I'm guessing, I'm, I'm guessing. I'm guessing that the Falcons will probably end up having about 20, 
maybe $22 million in cap space by the time they really start making some moves. Um, and, I, and, I, and, you know, you cannot, you clearly can't knock that. I mean, based on what we had last year, I mean, we had to get rid of one player to, uh, we had to get rid of one player just to sign our draft class. Now, you know, we could sign a, a few players in our draft class. Now we got 12 million right now, and it's probably going to, um, you know, increase. We got 16 million now, and it's probably going to increase by another five to six million, in my opinion. That's just my opinion. I don't know, but I'm just guessing because uh, I, I really feel like they're going to get rid of a few more people. So we'll, we'll see how that goes. So, uh, excuse me. So we'll we'll see how we'll see how that goes as far as um the Falcons in the next few weeks. So that's that's pretty neat. So uh wanna get off of that and um let's get into what I really want to talk about. What I really want to talk about is pretty neat. Do you see these guys right here? If you're watching on the screen, do you see these guys right here? Um, if you see the little small picture right here, this is a old uh, older picture of Jalen White that I made uh I mean, I didn't make it, but I talked about this picture back in the day, um, probably about a year or so ago, probably before then, maybe about eight months ago. I talked about this picture of Jalen White. Jalen White was already in the weight room getting it, getting it, getting it in, basically. And uh, you can see right here. Um, I, I, I will say in this picture, he kind of fell off a little bit. And this, and, and I don't think it's any of his fault. And I'm going to talk about that as well. But if you look at this first picture and you look at the second picture, he kind of fell off. And like I said, it's not his fault because the strength and conditioning, um, the strength and conditioning it, it has not been good last year. Um, somebody came to me uh, and asked me why these kids continuously getting injured, what the case may be, what is going on with the strength and conditioning. And it, we had a lot of injuries last year. And and that, that could have something to do with it. These guys, they're not bulky enough. They're, they can't take some of these uh, uh hits, some of these, in, you know, and a lot of these injuries happen. Now, now some of these injuries happen because, you know, okay, you know, joints, ligaments, or whatever the case may be, were um, extended or whatever the case may be. You look at the Cam Ransom injury. You look at a couple of other these knee injuries that we had. Um, I'm not an expert at this, but I, I do know that there's some correlation between strength and conditioning and getting hurt. I mean, you want to have yourself together when you're playing football, and it looks like this is what's going on. Um, look at this. Uh, shout out to Robert Steiner. I want to talk about him for a minute because he has done wonders with these kids. So Robert Steiner, um, he uh, – been on the strength and conditioning staff at USC, LSU, Mississippi State, and they, it was uh you know he became uh Clay Helton under Clay Helton's uh staff in 2021, late 2021 December as a matter of fact. Um, he was a director of sports performance uh with Clay Helton under USC as an assistant direct and as an assistant. Uh, after serving as, as an assistant director of football strength and conditioning in Notre Dame for three se seasons. So he has a lot of experience. I mean, he was at Cincinnati. Like I said, he's been in Notre Dame for three years. Uh, he's also been the strength and conditioning at Central Arkansas. Um, he's been around and he knows what he's doing. Uh, apparently, you look at Amari Jones here on the screen, you can see a difference instantly. And this is only um, I think this was only in a few weeks. Uh, I think Jalen White, you can look at the instant results there. I mean, look, uh, Jalen White, Jalen White needs to be, I, I know we have a lot of running backs. I know we do. And I know a lot of these running backs that we have going to bode well with the strength and conditioning. I mean, these only are just two pictures right here. Um, but when you look at these other guys that, are, that can run the rock, I mean, we're going to have some guys who are actually got some, you know, weight on them. They're going to have some strength on them. It, it's going to be, uh, Really good to see that these guys are uh, actually beefing up and getting some weight under them. I mean, you look at uh, you know, Amari Jones. Amari Jones could play pretty much any position. He's he's almost like the he's basically like the another version of. I mean, him and Najee Thompson are probably like almost like the same way. Um, Amari Jones could play receiver, running back. Uh, he's actually played quarterback for us, receiver. I mean, he he does a little bit of everything and uh. No telling where they're going to put him at this year as far as uh, positions. Um, they can use him everywhere. I mean, Jalen White is a bona fide running back. I mean, if you watched any of his uh, tape um, from high school to now, I mean, he's done great for us this past season. This, he was one of the shining moments of our uh, in our season. 
I mean, you look at him in the Arkansas State game. I mean, I mean, dude ran for over 100 yards and done very well for himself. Uh, I personally, he, he's my favorite running back on the team. I mean, it's not even close. Uh, and I mean, it's not a knock on everybody else because I do love everybody else. But I've been I've been a big a fan of Jalen White ever since he walked in the door from Alabama. So uh, I don't know how this running game is going to play out. But for me, I feel that uh, I, I would like to see him get the rock a lot more. I mean, we have a lot of running backs now, a lot. I mean, it's, it, it is ridiculous. And, <laughs> I mean, you look – I mean, we got like at least – I feel like we got at least seven running backs right now. I'm probably exaggerating. Maybe six running backs, including Amari Jones, even though he's not a running back. And I'll say about five of them could be running back one, RB1 somewhere. They're, they're that good. I mean, but, you know, with Georgia Southern is changing things around as far as, the you know, the offense, it's going to be really interesting to see what they're going to do. But I'm I'm just looking at what Robert Snyder done phenomenal job. He's done a phenomenal job. I mean, you look at these pictures. I mean, um, if you're looking on the uh, podcast side of things, um, I'm just going to tell you like Amari Jones basically beefed up. Look like he's gained like 15. And I ain't gonna say 20 pounds, but he like he gained like 15 pounds of muscle like instantly. And I don't know what how long he has been, but with Jalen White. Same thing. Jalen White looked like a totally different person. Um, this says on his weight to say he gained uh five pounds, but this doesn't look. This doesn't look like five pounds. And it started from uh January first. This is amazing. The, January first, twenty twenty two. It was the first picture, and it goes on basically, you know, uh seven weeks. It says eight weeks, but in eight weeks he jumped from two hundred five to two ten, and it just looks. It looks it look, it looks astounding. It looks like he's done. It's like he's gained much more weight. I know he's probably leaning forward, so it kind of looks like he's more uh, 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 defined than just him standing up. But he looks like a different person, and it's it's amazing what Robert Steiner is doing. I, I I'm really interested to see what the rest of the guys look like. You know, um, I would like to see what a uh, Gerald Green will look like because you know Gerald Green is a really good running back, but he he has. He has like a, a, a he, he's a one of a, the one of the smaller running backs, but I mean, I mean, the kid is like fast. I mean, he's like super duper fast. So uh, I will, I would like to see how how he is uh, shaped up. Um, a couple of other guys I would like to see as well. Um, definitely, I want to see what Cam Ransom looks like. I mean, Cam Ransom was already cut. I mean, he was already cut. I mean, at six three two, he was like six three two nineteen, six three two twenty. He was already there, but I can imagine what he looks like now. You know what I mean? Uh, Durham Burgess is another one I would like to see. Um, J.J. McAfee, I think he's still on the team. I would like to see what he uh, he looks like. Sean Pell Kissing, absolutely. I would love to see what Sean Pell Kissing looks like. I mean, Sean Pell, Pel, I always said it back, but Sean Pell Kissing was already one of those guys that was, he, he's like he was already built for the weight room. He was he was built for the weight room. He just needed the right person to 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 put him in the right position. And I'm And I'm like, look, Robert Stein is that guy. <laughs> Robert Stein is that guy. And um this is uh this is gonna be really, really, really cool to see. Um, because like right around the corner, I mean look, in what is as the time of this show, I mean eight days. Eight days is the first practice for 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 uh spring practice, the twenty second. So I mean, football is back, people, and we're starting to see what we we're starting to see some good things right now. You know, football is back, and you're looking at these guys already. Um, right out there, these guys are already cut up and ready to go. Uh, I'm pretty sure they're ready to get back on, on the field and do some things. They're, you know, they already been, you know, doing the, you know, they already been training or whatever the case may be, obviously. And, uh, you know, in eight days, they're going to be doing some practice. And uh, next month on the 23rd, I want to say the 23rd. I keep forgetting that 23rd is spring, the spring game. And I'm definitely going to be there for that. I'm going down there for that. So if you guys are going to be um, in the Statesboro area, uh, I definitely will be at that game for the, uh, for the spring game. I want to see what these guys are made of. I want to see the transition. I want to see what these guys are, have been taught and what they have um, obtained in the knowledge as far as football and applying it on the field. Cause I, I think coach Helton is, um, I think I think Coach Helton is has done a phenomenal job. 
you know, you, you see guys like uh, uh, Najee Thompson and that, that could be used anywhere. Or you can see guys like Cam Ransom, Jalen White, Amari Jones. I mean, I, the list could go, goes on and on. You can look at these guys who are hungry that wanted to win games last year and was basically uh, handcuffed because of a, a lot of factors that happened. You know, I mean, I mean, you know, and, and there's no love lost anymore. I, I, I can say this now. I, it's not like I never, you know felt any you know ill will towards gavin adcock i mean he was just living his life <laughs> unfortunately he was just living his life and uh, uh and uh unfortunately is uh it, it came back to bite the george southern eagles and um it's some certain things you can and can't do and and it's a lesson learned you look back on it now you know gavin adcock has moved on with his life and and um that i don't think that was the deciding factor but it did not help matters and uh shout out to uh coach uh Chad Lunsford, he's down at uh, FAU right now, and uh, he's moved on. And I think at the point that I think all of us, more well, most of us in, in, in Eagle Nation, have moved on as well. When we're looking at this whole situation, and um, we're we're excited to see what we see now. I mean, you got guys like you know this whole coaching staff, uh, Robert Steiner, you know, and uh, you know Ryan Applin and uh, 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 Ellis and Harris and. All these other people that are here now, um, looking back on it now, that you know, it, it was a messed up situation, but the future is bright now, and it's good to see these kids having um, having ha having some good leadership. And I'm not saying the bad the leadership last year wasn't good. I mean, it could have it could have you know, as far as I'm concerned, I think the leadership was good as far as. I think it was excellent as far as, you know, leading young boys to be men. I, I agree with that. I don't have a problem with that as far as the, the leadership there. But as far as football, X and O's, I mean, we they, they dropped the ball big time. You know, I mean, it was cool for the, you know, the the, the Camellia Bowl and, and the RL Carrier Bowl. I mean, you can't knock the results because the results are great. But I, I will say this forever. I think those boys won those games despite – the handicap of the last coaching staff. Those guys were just that talented. I mean, there's nobody can tell me that uh, there was some game plan out there. And and, and I know, I, and, and I, I wonder if I'm wrong, please let me know. I don't think there was some game plan out there to say, hey, um, this game plan is going to beat this team. No, we, we went right at them. We ran the ball and said, you can't stop us. And if you try to stop us, we're going to try to throw the ball over the top. There was no like, I think the only time a game plan was really put in place was the UMass game. That was one of the few games that I actually saw where we drove the ball downfield and it looked like a game plan was, or the the drives on that game on, in that game would look like uh, we were actually game planning to play against UMass. We mix it up with ran, running pass. Um, shout out to Captain Clack. You can go back and watch that game on YouTube. Um, the UMass game when Shaw Wirtz actually looked like he was a dual threat quarterback. And I'm not saying he doesn't look like a dual threat. He didn't. He never looked like a dual threat quarterback at Georgia Southern. But you could tell that the way the game plan was set, it was like he wanted to run and throw the ball much more, and they they set him up to do so. So um, now you look at the the transition. Now I, I mean, from what I've seen ever since you know uh, Clay Helton stepped on the scene in November, um, you can see that this this football program is going to be led by guys who know X's and O's. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not saying that Ruse and, and Sloan and them. I mean, I think Scott Sloan was amazing at defense. We did great on defense. You know what I'm saying? That they know X's and O's, but I think I think they're – I believe that their offense, the offense in general was just outdated. I think it was just an outdated offense. We need to move up to the modern times. And I know some people don't like to hear that because some people still want to run the triple option, but – there's no way you can run the triple option with all this talent. Not now. Um, you have to have a Pacific type of uh, 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 athlete to do so, and these athletes here are ready to run a pro style offense. And I think uh, Clay Helton is 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 ready, more than willing to do so with the transfers that came in, the guys on defense that are here, the receivers that we recruited. I mean, we already had the running backs. So the running back was never the issue, but um. I think we we're going to be uh, re looking very different starting the next few weeks. I'm here for it. I can't wait. Shout out to Robert Steiner, strength head strength and conditioning coach. You look at what these kids are doing. If you look at this on the screen, they look great. 
They look really good. And um, the transition from Jalen White from where he was and he and to me, like I said, um, he, 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 he bounced back really good based on these three pitches. Amari Jones, I mean, man, Amari Jones looks great. He looks great. And, and this all shout out to what these guys are doing in the weight room, and um, not only that, the nutritionists and everything goes. I don't, I, I didn't. Uh, sorry, I forgot that person. Whoever's the nutritionist, but they're doing a great job, um, phenomenal job. Can't ask for more than that. Um, can't wait to see what happens from there. Um, shout out to Matt Ryan uh, for restructuring his contract, helping the team once again, and we're going to see how that plays out as far as uh, the Falcons and free agency. Shout out to Georgia Southern Eagles, Amari Jones and Jalen White for putting this information out there. They look really good as far as before and after. And last but not least, definitely Robert Steiner. Thank you, sir, for getting these kids in order and um, getting these guys ready to play some football. It, you you can't ask for more than this. I mean, this is great. Just once again, um, Georgia Southern is showing the 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 transition of coaches is is in in the results early, and it needs to show better results on the field. Can't wait to see that. All right, y'all. I'll see you guys. You guys enjoy the rest of your Monday, and uh, I will see you guys on the next one. Uh, you guys be easy. You guys be blessed. Peace.